You don't have to be sorry. There's nothing for you to be sorry for. It's just, you know, if uh, something that. This is an NBC News special report. Here's Lester Holt. Good afternoon. We're coming on the air with more breaking news unfolding at this hour. Two explosions in Kabul, one at the airport's Abbey Gate, the other at a nearby hotel. The Pentagon labeling them as a complex attack, adding this news, bit of distressing news. We're just getting there have been a number of fatalities, including now a number of U.S. service members. All this happening just hours after the U.S. warned of potential terror attack and urged the 1,500 Americans remaining in Afghanistan to stay away from the airport. Of course, thousands of Afghans are also stranded there. Many were crowded around the airport at the time of the explosions, trying to flee the country in the wake of the Taliban's takeover. We want to go to NBC's Courtney Cuby right now. She's been talking with sources uh, at the Pentagon. Uh, do we have any firm numbers right now? We don't yet, Lester. And I, what I can tell you is that there were U.S. Marines that were guarding that gate, the Abbey Gate. This is on the southeast side of, Car of Hamid Karzai International Airport. And there were Marines there that were helping as uh, Americans and Afghans would come to the gate to get uh, access to some of these evacuation flights. They were letting them in. Uh, we know that there were Marines there at the time of the explosion. We know at least three were injured. But now, as you mentioned, according to the statement from Pentagon Press Secretary, we know that there were actually service members among those killed. We're also hearing reports about a number of Afghan civilians that were injured and killed in these attacks. So, as you mentioned, there were two locations for this explosion. The Abbey Gate, which is where, again, people have been going in to get, to, to get into access into the, the airport there. The second one was very close by by at the Baron Hotel. This is a hotel that has been frequented by Westerners for several years. And even recently, it was a location where Americans and others were gathering to make the walk over to the Abbey Gate to get access to the airport. We know that it's been a source of, of security concern, particularly in the last week. Large crowds have been gathering outside this gate to the extent that there was a group of Americans last Thursday who gathered there to make the walk together. And it was such a, a difficult security environment that the U.S. military decided to send helicopters into the Baron to pick them up and to literally hop over the crowds the very short distance into Kabul International Airport. Again, two explosions today. We don't have an, a, an, a firm idea yet of who may have been behind this attack. There was a very specific and, and tailored threat stream that existed already about an ISIS attack. They were looking to attack at the airport, particularly around, around some of these gates targeting Americans. So all signs would point to this being an attack by ISIS-K. But again, Lester, we don't have any firm attribution at this point. All right, Courtney, walk me through where we stand logistically right now during all this we were looking at a camera from Kabul we could clearly see the flow of transports is continuing but there's also the, the necessity to, to draw down American forces there do we know how many have left or did that leave a, a weakened posture around the gate it, the, the drawdown of U.S. forces there, of the roughly it's less than 6,000 U.S. troops there, has not officially begun. There's still somewhere in the neighborhood of about 5,400 U.S. troops there working on this evacuation effort. And part of that includes the security effort for, to, to secure the airport for the evacuation. So at this point, that has not started. But as you well know, Lester, the U.S. troops, they can't just come and go in a very short time. It will take a couple of days for all of those troops to leave. So there has been a real ramping up of the evacuation effort. If the U.S. is to meet the August 31st deadline for all troops to be out, they have to back time from that. So that if you take two, three, maybe even as many as four days for those troops to leave and their equipment, we're getting into the literally the final day or two that they will be able to, to maintain these high pace of evacuation operations. When you have something like today, this, this attack at the airport, that will obviously have a major impact on the number uh, on getting people out during those evacuations they had there has been a, a very significant ramp up tens of thousands of people have been moved out in the last several days that is sure to slow down today with this attack all right courtney thank you again the headline a number of u.s service members killed today in this attack at Kabul airport i want to go to white house correspondent peter alexander uh, peter anything officially from the white house obviously they're spending time in the situation room trying to figure out next steps
Yeah, Lester, that's exactly right. I think it is highly likely that we will hear from President Biden at some point over the course of this afternoon. Nothing official yet from the White House. We can tell you to this point over the course of the day, the president huddled in the Situation Room earlier this morning for more than an hour with members of his national security team, commanders on the ground from Afghanistan, joining for that conversation. Secretary of State Blinken there, the Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin there, as well as the chair of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Milley, joining the president. Then he gathered in the Oval, and we were told he would continue to receive updates over the course of this day when we receive the news of a number of service members losing their lives in this complex attack in Kabul airport. Recognize that the White House, the president himself in the last 48 hours, has indicated that speed meant safety, that there were real risks of a terror attack and that they would only increase the longer the U.S. stayed on the ground there. So among the questions that President Biden now faces is how this impacts this massive airlift effort going forward, just five days before that August 31st deadline to try to get all Americans out. The president said just a matter of days ago that the U.S. was on pace to complete its mission by then. But he said that depended on a couple of things. One, the continued cooperation of the Taliban. And number two, most notably, given what we have now witnessed, no disruptions to the effort on the ground there, given what is clearly a disruption and now the loss of not just Afghan but American lives as well. The president will have to make a decision whether this means the U.S. ultimately tries to get out before that date, if, if it will decide, the president will decide to extend the mission past that day, the series of questions facing the president now. It's a, it's a day that is still fluid, as they describe it here at the White House, with expectation, we believe, that we would hear from the president later today. The press secretary's briefing has been delayed. A meeting with the Israeli prime minister also put on hold. Buster. Peter Alexander at the White House. Keep us posted from there. NBC's chief foreign correspondent Richard Engel has been in and out of Kabul. He was at the airport there earlier, now in Doha. Uh, typically, the United States considers response to terror attacks against Americans. Does the U.S. have such an option in these circumstances? No, uh, is, the, is the simple answer. Uh, what happened in Kabul is as the Taliban rolled into the city and took control, and the Taliban generally controlled the city quite uh, quite firmly. Uh, there's not a lot of chaos in, in Kabul right now. There's not traffic, there's not looting, there's not, uh, uh, there's not chaos or, or on the streets. But when the Taliban did roll in, they opened the prisons. They freed themselves or the guards who were there, they freed their own prisoners or the guards who were there ran away. And there were tens of thousands of people in these prisons. And they, they included many dangerous extremists, including extremists from ISIS. So since the fall of Kabul, while the Taliban has been controlling the city, you have all of these radicals who are against the Taliban, who have nowhere to go. They can't leave the country. They have no future with the Taliban. So one of them apparently, according to uh, intelligence uh, sources, carried out this attack. That is the suspicion. That is what the U.S. was warning about. And Courtney described it very well. Uh, there is this corridor right uh, between the Barron Hotel, which was built to house contractors right next to the airport. The airport is a military base, and the military base is surrounded by very high walls and it has three main gates. And this this, this hotel, uh, which is not like a hotel, it's almost like a little, it's almost like a, a part of the base uh, because it's pushed right up against the wall, built there so that security contractors could come. They didn't have to go far. They didn't have to enter the city. They could stay there if they had business in Kabul. It has been used as a staging area. From the Baron Hotel, it's just about a two or three hundred yard walk to this Abbey Gate. And in this corridor, Afghans have been gathering. They've been trying to push up against the the gate and see if they could get in and and i think you're playing some video i was staying at the baron we drove this uh, corridor just a few days ago and in this corridor which is flanked by tall concrete blast barriers there is a sewage drainage ditch and it appears that this suicide bomber was able to infiltrate this area through this sewage canal because at the taliban were controlling the outer perimeter but they might not have been controlling the actual sewage ditch itself. And people, desperate people, and it shows the degree of desperation there, were wading through this filthy wastewater to get to the gate to see if there was an opportunity that they could get in. And in this chaotic scene where you have the Taliban on the outside, Afghans 
gathered there trying to get in, some of them even wading through sewage to get in. You saw this explosion, and Marines were apparently in the vicinity, uh, and, 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 and several lost their lives as they were manning that gate. So it's not going to stop the evacuations. This is far away from the flight line. It's not going to impact aircraft, but there are only a limited number of gates. And if one now is clearly compromised, slowed down security uh, concerns there, it puts even more pressure on the others. Uh, this is something the Taliban doesn't want. Several Taliban fighters outside were killed themselves, but there is only so much that they can do with tens of thousands of people who escaped from the prisons who are who are still on the, on the loose. Right. All right, uh, Richard, thank you very much. It will certainly impact American decision-making. We're uh, certainly keeping an eye on more reaction from the White House and the administration about these developments. Again, we learned from the Pentagon a short time ago a number of U.S. service members were killed in what the Pentagon is describing as a complex attack at the Kabul airport, a number of others being treated for wounds. We also believe a number of civilian casualties there. We'll continue to monitor the situation in Kabul. We'll bring you the very latest as we get it. And of course, coverage continues right now on MSNBC and later on NBC Nightly News. I'm Lester Holt in New York. Good day, everyone. Where's papers? We have 40 days to respond.